In this video, we're going to be reviewing the Smith & Wesson Model 66K frame. For those of you who might have served as a police officer or some type of armed duty within the 1970s or 80s, this is familiar to you. Uh, this was arguably one of the most carried and used pistols, service pistols at that time. The origins of the Model 66 come from the original Smith & Wesson Model 19, which was the forerunner to this, to this pistol, uh, which was first developed back in 1957. The Model 66 was developed and, and produced between 1970 and, and 2005. The main difference between the 66 over the 19 was it was uh, issued in stainless steel as well as it had a smooth uh, target style uh, trigger. This particular was a duty pistol and it is model 66-2 which was produced back in the early 1980s. Looking at some of the things that I like and, and things that I don't like so much about the stuff, it is a Smith & Wesson, which means it is a high quality revolver. This was, uh, they were clearly known and continue to be known for producing really high end uh, revolvers quality and this is no exception. Many people who have used the Model 66 in the past have claimed this is arguably one of the best pistols they ever produced. It is also a smaller and lighter version of the end frame model. So the end frame models, which first adopted the 357 Magnum, were then taken and scaled down a little bit to produce the K frame, which makes this a, lightable, a lighter option to the end frame models uh, in carry and use. It is also safe to carry in all six rounds, uh, even though it's a uh, firing pin mounted onto the hammer. All Smith & Wessons, or at least almost all of them since World War II were designed that way. So if you do see firing pin on the hammer as opposed to in the frame, it is still safe to, to carry all six rounds uh, in chambers as well as the hammer down. Um, it is a revolver, so it can get dirty when you fire it. It's just typical for a revolver. It's also not designed for a heavy diet of high pressure 357 Magnum loads. If you want that, you should move up to the, to the heavier end frame models to do that. There's been some controversy over the years of whether or not there's been some issues with you know the 357 and, and what types of loads you can shoot out of the Model 66. But generally, if you shoot the standard 357 loads, it'll be fine. And some of the ones like like I recommend, for example, are out of underwood ammo. Uh, they make 125 grain that comes out at 600, 1600 feet uh, per second, which is almost 800 foot pounds of energy. If you're out in the woods or you want defense against uh, larger predators or hunting, uh, you can move up to the 158 and even 180 grain hard cast uh, loads as well. So, but a lot of power comes out of the 357 Magnum, which is what makes it such a, a fantastic round. Uh, the other benefit of the 357 is you can shoot smaller down or smaller loads out of it so you can download it uh, for example to the 38 special plus P or the 38 special which is not only easier to shoot but also much more affordable so you have a number of different caliber options within the 357 to fire out of the model 66. Um, it is a six shot revolver, typical old style that you would see. Many of the newer ones that are coming out today, including for example, this 686 now include a seventh round into the cylinder. So um, there is a limitation from the newer models where you do only have six rounds uh, to carry. The other controversy as I alluded to earlier is how much 357 loads can you fire out of this pistol without compromising for example what's called the forcing cone which is the cone in between the cylinder and the barrel where the round goes into after firing. Uh, some people have claimed over the years that if you fire too much uh, 357s or too high of pressure 357s, you can add forcing cone into cracking. So many people have claimed because of that, you know, you need to obviously keep it clean, keep the forcing cone clean, and don't shoot too many uh, 357 magnums or too much of a diet out of it. However, I do know people that have literally fired thousands of rounds of 357 caliber loads out of this, never once had a problem uh, with the pistol at all. So again, um, you know, you're going to get plenty of power alone out of the standard uh, standard issue uh, and Underwood uh, ammo loads. And I know there's other calibers out there or other manufacturers out there as well. But again, that's the beauty of the 357 Magnum is it is already a powerful load to begin with and can, has literally dropped almost anything in the North American continent. As far as action, it is a typical double action, very smooth, typical Smith & Wesson, or you can uh, pull back, fire it single action. <clears throat> as far as ergonomics and weight, um, the only change I made uh, to the pistol was I added Hogue grips onto the pistol. Uh, it had the 
the traditional stock wood on here from the police duty, which are terrible. Uh, normally, <laughs> if you're firing smaller, uh, you know, 38 special loads, it wasn't that big of a deal. But if I'm firing hotter loads out of this, it's not comfortable to fire. So one of the things I did was the hoe grips, at least now, are, are some of the best options out there. And I have no problem shooting any load out of this comfortably with the hoe grips. Um, you also have uh, adjustable sights on here as well. Uh, and I can flip this around uh, as well. But again, you have a nice sight picture with a, a four inch barrel option on the pistol itself. Um, as far as accuracy, <clears throat> accuracy in the Smith Model 66, this is the types of groups that I received out of the pistol. So this is the first round was at uh, 30 feet and then the second round was at 50 feet. And then moving out and in, um, taking this out to 70 feet the groups opened up just a little bit and then I did a uh, double action and then single action uh, groups at 20 feet. So again, pretty good accuracy what you would expect out of a revolver and to compare that for example to the model 686 <coughs> just to see what kind of comparisons we have. Again, 30 feet between the 66 and the 686. Again, pretty similar groups. Uh, a little bit tighter with the 686 um, on at 50 feet. And then on the 70 foot and 20 foot options, again, pretty similar groupings between the 66 and the 686, as well as within 20 feet one handed. Again, pretty similar. So, not much gained at all, uh, if any, uh, between accuracy of the, the newer 686 and the 66. So, the accuracy is, is very good <clears throat> between the pistols. Now, there's also the issue of the weight of the pistols and where they come in at. And comparing some of these options today, um, when you look at the 66, it comes in at two pounds and a little over three ounces. So if you compare that, for example, to the most common carry today, which is a Glock 17, that comes in at one pound, six ounces. So clearly it's heavier than the Glock 17. Um, looking back a little bit on the police positive 38, comes in at one pound, four ounces. So a little bit less the six 86 weighs in at two pounds three and a half ounces so even heavier with the three inch barrel not even a four inch barrel and then this is the model 60 uh, which again is often carried within the two this is the three inch barrel configurations <clears throat> comes in about a pound or one pound six and a half ounces so there is some weight uh, to the 357 magnum but that comes with the territory that's what the pistol is um, as far as alternatives in the market um, at the time, uh, you know, you had other Smith models. Uh, Smith was the 10,000 pound gorilla, so naturally they made most of the competing models that were out there. You also saw Colt Pythons and others within the market today or at that time frame. But um, really, when you look at the utility of the pistol and what it was, uh, it was a common police carry gun back in the 1970s and 1980s. And many of the people that carried these and, you know, put their lives in, uh, uh, you know, in the balance with these swear by them and said they're some of the best pistols they've, they've ever owned and many of them actually still own them today. Uh, so as far as utility beyond that, it is a really a fantastic self-defense pistol, both for two as well as four-legged predators. The benefit with the 357 Magnum is you can shoot all different types of loads out, whether they be smaller 38 specials to <clears throat> 357 Magnums designed for heavier game hunting to, to smaller uh, self-defense. But you have a lot of options with this and there's really not much you can't do with this pistol. There's many states require for hunting uh, that you have about a six inch barrel, which this is a four inch barrel. So this would be more of a self-defense option than a hunting option. Uh, but again, if you're out in the woods or if you're using self-defense or in your home, this is just a fantastic option uh, for self-defense purposes. It's a little bit heavier than a lot of concealed carry options today, but if you don't, if mobility is less of an issue or you're simply packing out in the woods, uh, the Model 66 is just a, a great option. So uh, overall, you know, this is a high quality, high value pistol. Um, this is an heirloom in many respects, uh, hand me down if you take care of it and clean it, uh, this will be owned for generations out there. It shoots one of the most versatile uh, uh, cartridges out there today uh, with the ability to fire 357s down to shorter loads and all different types of variations. It uh, You don't have feeding problems you potentially do with the semi-automatic so you have different types of uh, you know, you can shoot everything from wog cutters um, to, to fluted loads to hard cast, uh, you know, flat, uh, flat tip loads. So really a lot of great options for this. 
<clears throat> great to own. A lot of these are secondhand now, uh, former police duty pistols. If you can find them, pick them up. They're great to own, fun to own, fun to shoot, uh, just all around a great pistol. Um, so if you like this video and you like us, please, uh, please like us and subscribe on YouTube. And thanks for watching.